بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله رب العالمين والصلاة والسلام على أشرف الأنبياء والمرسلين سيدنا وحبيبنا ونبينا محمد وعلى آله وأصحابه وأزواجه ومن تبعهم بأحسان إلى يوم الدين قال الله تعالى والكاظمين الغيظ والعافين عن الناس والله يحب المحسنين وقال تعالى خذ العفو وأمر بالعرف وأعرض عن الجاهلين وعن ابن عباس رضي الله عنهما قال قال رسول الله صلى الله عليه وسلم للأشج عبد القيس إن فيك خصلتين يحبهم الله الحلم والأنا This chapter is about controlling the anger, tolerance, patience, and being polite, having mildness in our behavior, Of course, anger is one of the worst disease that human beings have. How many times we do things out of anger and later on we ourselves feel sorry for doing it. How many times you say something and then later on you wish if you would not have said it. How many times you do certain things in a special way, in certain way, and then you yourself regret for doing it, and you feel sorry for yourself. But at the time when the person is angry, does not realize what he's doing. And he just likes to react. And in reality, anger is a flame of a fire inside the human being that burns in the heart of a human being. As Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam have also said it in the hadith, that anger is a flame of a fire and then he said don't you see when a person gets angry he starts turning red that's a sign that there is a fire going inside the person he's boiling now so anger is one of the worst things we have and it has countless harms when we react to our anger. But at the same time, it's not something that we can get rid of it totally. It's not something that we can pick it up and throw it away. There are two things about it. Number one, anger is needed some time. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala did not put this anger in human beings for no reason. And once we know that it's there and we can never get rid of it, we can never throw it away. So the second thing we have to remember is, what is the right use for it? And at the same time, how to control it when is not the time to use it. These are certain things that we need to learn about anger. And inshallah, we will discuss these few things in the light of hadith. Today, as we are talking about this chapter of anger, and at the same time, when a person won't be angry, then of course, we'll be behaving the opposite of anger, and that is being humble and tolerant. A person came to Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa 
And he said, Ya Rasulullah, awsini. I need you to advise me, Ya Rasulullah. Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, La taghdab. Do not get angry. So that person repeated again, Awsini, Ya Rasulullah. I need another advice, Ya Rasulullah. Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam again repeated the same advice, La taghdab. Don't get angry. He asked the same question again, and again Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam gave him the same reply. To tell us that this is something, if you do it, you don't need anything else. You will control most of the other problems in your life. But this is the problem, when we don't know how to control it, then we start getting into things that we are not supposed to be in those. You might think that a lot of times you don't do things that are related to anger. You do a lot of other wrong things, but they are not related to anger in any way. I would have to tell you this at this time and remind all of us at this time that remember, most of the times, the sins that we commit and the wrongdoings that we do are one way or other related to anger. How? Sometimes they are related to anger directly. And that is, someone said something, you, re you reacted to that. Someone did something that you did not like, you reacted to that. And then, you had seen the consequences of that in wrong results that you faced in your life. Either, number one, you had to apologize later on, feel sorry about doing that, or number two, it might even be that you did not even wait or the person did not even wait for you to do any of these things and he reacted also back and he might have hurt you, harm you, and nevertheless, if you did not, if none of these two things happen, the third thing will be normally there, and that is, that person carries grudge against you from now on, he will try to hurt you and harm you whenever he can. These are the direct results of anger. Sometimes we get into them indirectly, and that is, you, get, you got angry, and you said something against a person, even if the person did not hear it, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala never sleeps. He's always there. He's always hearing it. And Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam tells us in the hadith, don't make fun of your brothers. Otherwise, Allah will cure him from the thing that he's going through and will put you in his situation. What happens many times is that at the time when we are angry, we use words that are not suitable for us to use and especially we use them against, might be against some of our elders. We might have used a word against our parents. We might have used a word against our teachers. We might have used a word against one of our, uh, a person who's supposed to be respected in the community. As soon as we say that, Sometime in our life, we will have to face the results of that. We will have to see the consequences of that, those words that we have said against those people. It will never be just gone like that. And it's not that if this person won't react, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is not going to uh, take uh, or punish the person for what we have done wrong to those people. So many times we get indirect results for these type of angers and for words we say when we are angry. So it's one of the very important things that we all have to pay attention to it. And especially with the type of lifestyle that we have nowadays, as people call it freedom. Everyone's a, every one person wants some freedom in his way of thinking, dealing, behaving, living. And with that type of free style and free living style, most of the people don't know how to control their anger. Because they like, they want to be free. When you get angry, you do something. 
You break a glass, you break your plates, you throw something at someone, you curse at people, you fight with people. You want to do something when you are angry. And therefore we find a lot of people nowadays around us don't know how to control their anger. Which is a big problem. Most of the problems people have and they face in their lives, whether it's in their homes or at the schools, on the streets, wherever they might be, most of the problems you will see, they are the results of not knowing how to control the anger. Most of the problems are because of this. A person saw something that he did not like, he got angry, he reacted to that, and a fight started. When a fight started, it got worse, the situation got worse, and at the end he might be ending up hurting himself, something is wrong, something wrong was done to him. So most of the problems happen because of the anger and because of not knowing how to control the anger. And for this reason, Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam repeatedly said to the Sahabi, La taghdab, don't get angry, control your anger, that will be the best thing you would do for yourself in your life. And because by controlling your anger, you will stay away from most of the troubles in your life. A person came to Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam to visit him. His name was Ashaj. When he came, the rest of the people of his clan, they rushed to Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. But this person, he went, he changed his dress, cleaned himself, then he went to Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Of course, they traveled from a long distance. And after, we don't know how many weeks they arrived to Medina Munawwara. In those days, they used to travel on the camels and horses. So it took them weeks before they arrived to Medina Munawwara. And everyone was anxious to see Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam as soon as he came. So they all rushed to see Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. But this person did not rush for that. And he took his time, he took shower, he cleaned himself, he changed his dress. Then he went to Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, when he saw this person, he said to him, Inna fika khaslatayn yuhibbuhum Allah. You have two qualities in you that Allah loves in you. Allah loves these two qualities and you have them. Al-hilmu wal ina. One is mildness. That you are very humble. You think before you do something. And of course that helps him control his anger. And at the same time, whenever he does something, he thinks before doing it. So same thing he did at this situation, that when they arrived Medina Munawwara, he did not just rush to go and see Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. He took his time, cleaned himself because he thought, I should be clean before I go and see the Prophet of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. So see, that quality, how he was using it everywhere. So that was one thing. And the second thing Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, the tolerance that you have. So these are the two qualities a person whoever has them, Allah loves that person because of having these qualities. Once a sahabi of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam with the name Abdullah bin Amr bin al-As radiallahu anhu, a very well-known sahabi, he went to Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam to ask him a question. And the question was very important. He asked him, Ya Rasulullah, ماذا ينقذني من غضب الله? What would save me from the anger of Allah? Very important thing for all of us. Who doesn't want to be saved from the anger of Allah? We can never take the punishment of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Imagine a slight burn that we get in this life. How painful that is. If a person by mistake touches the iron, finger got burned, the oil flew on the person and the person got burned by that oil. I mean, a slight burn, a small breakage in the bones, something where is a small cut in the body, we cannot take it. It's very painful. How many times you see a person crying has have a toothache? Cannot take it. We cannot do anything because a person is having headache. 
He is not able to understand things, cannot think anything. So these small pains, we are not able to take them. How can we take those punishments of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala of the hellfire? With all the snakes and scorpions uh, biting the person. So every person has to do something to protect himself against the punishment of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So Abdullah bin Amr bin al-As radiyallahu anhu, as he was worried about it, he went and asked Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, Ya Rasulullah, ماذا ينقذني من غضب الله? What would save me from the anger of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala? Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said to him, La taghdab. You don't get angry and don't react according to your anger. Don't do the wrong things to people when you are angry. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will not punish you because of you doing wrong things also. And always we need to remember that we are doing more sins Har and I mean, we are disobeying Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala more than anyone else will disobey us. No one has ever disobeyed us in our life as much as we have disobeyed Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And if we think that we need to punish this person, we have to realize that Allah will punish us too. So the way of protecting ourselves against the punishment of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is that we control our anger in this world and do not punish the people that are getting us angry. But re remember, another very important point here is that we are not supposed to get angry for our souls. But if a person is doing something against the deen of Allah, he's doing haram, he's doing sins, then of course we have to get angry. In those cases, not getting angry is not allowed. It says, it has been rated about Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam that he never used to get angry for himself. But when a person would do something against Islam, then no one used to be more angry than Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. So he's teaching us the right use. Where do you use your anger? So we have to learn where to use it and where not to use it. We cannot always use the same uh, method that uh, never get angry. That's not right either. You have to get angry sometime. When people are in the battlefield, if they won't get angry, they won't be able to fight. They need the anger over there. Abdullah bin Mas'ud radiyallahu anhu says, Once Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam asked us, مَا تَعُدُّونَ السُّرْعَةَ فِيكُمْ Who is considered the strong person amongst you people? Who is a strong man? And we all like to prove that we are strong. I can beat him up, man. I can do this to him. So we all like to show our muscles and our strength. Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam asked, مَا تَعُدُّونَ السُّرْعَةَ فِيكُمْ Who is considered a strong person amongst you people? Sahaba Ridwanullahi alayhi majma'in replied, Alladhi la tasra'uhu rijal That's a person who cannot be wrestled down by others. Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, No, that's not right. Laysa dhalik. وَلَكِنَّ الَّذِي يَمْلِكُ نَفْسَهُ عِنْدَ الْغَضَبِ The real strong person is the one who can control his anger. Otherwise, you get defeated by your own anger. You might beat up any person, but you get defeated by your own anger. And your anger defeats you and then makes you do things that you are not supposed to do. And later on, you, you think about it, oh, that was wrong. I wish I would not have done it. But you are defeated by your anger. In other hadith, Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, مَا غَضِبَ أَحَدٌ إِلَّا أَشْفَى عَلَى جَهَنَّمُ When a person gets angry, at the time when he's angry, he's just standing at the edge of the hellfire, can fall in it at any time. At the time of the anger, he's standing just at the edge of the hellfire. He might do anything now that will throw him into the hellfire. And therefore, in many ahadith, Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam asked us to be very tolerant and mention the virtue of tolerance and of being mild all the time in our life, in our behavior, not to react and always think, be very wise before doing anything, before acting. 
Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said in the hadith, Inna Allah rafiqun yuhibbur rafiq. Allah is very kind and He likes kindness. He likes when people are kind, gentle, soft. وَيُعْطِي عَلَى الرِّفْقِ مَا لَا يُعْطِي عَلَى الْعُنُفِ And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala gives the person for being kind so many things that a person cannot achieve by being harsh. So you can get so many things and blessings of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala by being kind that you can never get those things by being harsh. So in other words, when we are harsh, we are losing so many things that we could have got by not practicing this quality that we have and by being very humble and kind. And therefore in another hadith, Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam says, إِنَّ الرِّفْقَ لَا يَكُونُ فِي شَيْءٍ إِلَّا زَانَةٍ Whenever there is kindness, softness in anything, that thing becomes nice and beautiful. So in any of our action, if we like to see it nice and we like to see our actions being very beautiful, then we should always have it practice kindness in performing those things. To the extent Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam advised us to be kind even to animals when we are slaughtering the animals. How many instructions Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam has given us and given us in the hadith to be kind to animals so that we won't be hurting the animals simply. For example, Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, make sure that you sharpen your knife properly before you start cutting and slaughtering the animal. Because if the knife, the knife is not sharp, you might just keep on cutting in and cutting in and it's not getting cut, uh, uh, you, you are not able to cut it fast and the animal is going through a lot of pain. In another hadith, he also advised us, do not cut one animal in front of another animal. Do not slaughter one animal in front of another animal because the other animals will see that and they will be going through moral pain at that time, spiritual pain at that time while seeing the other animal being cut like that and bleeding in that way. Kindness in everything. So whatever we do, there has to be kindness in that. Don't use your anger. Don't just use your emotions. Learn how to control your emotions. And the best way for doing that, of course, I would inshallah talk in brief about how to control the anger. But the best way about doing that is make a habit. Whenever you are in that, those type of situations when there are emotions, whenever there is an emotion involved, sometime a person comes and he tells us, you know, that man, he did this and this and this. And you get so emotional and you say, this is what we should do. This is what we should do, say to this person. We should go and tell him this. We should go and do this to him. We have to go and stop him. No, never do that. Never react when you are emotional. Stop it. Control it. Sit down. Think about it. Give yourself some time. And then... When you see that now the emotions are over, now sit and with all sincerity think about the situation. What is the best way of dealing with it? Because, take an example, if a person is doing something wrong, he always been talking against you. And that person is always trying to hurt you. Now, all of a sudden, you got an opportunity. He was in the same, he happened to be invited in the same place where you were invited. Now you start giving him bad. You talk about him, you, you tell him on his face, and you know he can never tell you anything back on your face at that time because he have done all of those wrong things. So you keep on telling him and telling him and you keep on cursing at him and insult him in the public in front of those people. What will happen next? As soon as he will leave that gathering or you left the gathering, he will continue talking even more about you. So did you stop him from doing what he was doing? You did not. You got the situation even worse for yourself. So what's the best way? When you walk and you see that person, now emotions are telling you, now give it to him. You do something now. Now you can really talk to him. But sit down. Think about it. Might be the best idea. Put your hand in your pocket and see you might have a bottle of ether, perfume, or you have something nice in your pocket, you here, take it out and give it to him. This is a gift for you. 
Now, next time before he would talk about, he has to think hundred times. You know, I do this, I talk about against him and he gives me this gift. So you want to deal with the situation in the best way. You want to stop the situation. You don't want to get the situation worse. So this is always emotions never make us, never allow us to think right. And in whichever the emotions might be, there might be emotions in love, emotion in hatred, in whichever way the emotions come. So therefore we always have to just give ourselves some time. Think about the situation. So I was saying, the best way is that we all have a habit. As Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said to that person, that Allah gave you the mildness that the person is always mild, he never gets too emotional and never acts at the time of emotions. And that is the reason in Quran al kareem when Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala talked about anger, He said, وَالْكَاظِمِينَ الْغَيْزِ True believers and good uh, believers are those who control their anger. It's not that they never get angry. We all get angry. But after getting angry, what's the next step? The next step is, sometimes we react, but Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is telling us, instead of reacting, just stop it at that time. Think about it. Then it might be, it might be that you have to do something about it. When you think about it sincere, with all sincerity and without emotions involved, you think about the situation, it might be that you have to do something about it, then you do that. But it might also be that later on you think, no, the best thing is just to ignore it. So ignore it. Or the best thing is to do something good in that situation. So you do something good. So then you do whatever you're supposed to do and whatever your uh, thinking or by seeking other people's opinion you get the, to the right conclusion and the mm, proper conclusion but when emotions are involved people make such big mistakes people make such mistakes at the time of being emotional that sometimes people lose their lives because of emotions people lose their lives because of being emotions how many times you might hear a person walking on the street, got into a fight, and the other person killed him. What happened? The other person might have just cursed him initially. And as he could not take it, he went and he wanted to fight back. So he pulled his gun out and, and he, he fired at him. So people lose their lives because of not knowing how to control their anger. Many times people lose their iman because of not knowing how to control their anger. They lose their iman. A person told him advice to do something good. He was doing some, a sin. Advice to do something good. And because he could not take that advice and he became angry, he said something against Quran, against Islam, against Deen. He, that's it. He's out. How many times people lose some of the most valuable things in their lives because of this anger and because of not knowing how to control it. The parent said something and the person got angry and he reacted and he said something back to his parents. Imagine what can be the re result of that. Do you think Allah will just let it go like this? Do you think this person is not going to now face the result of these, uh, these words that he said back to his parents? Sometime it might be a person that you learned the deen from. You got upset. And you did not want to learn it from the person. You said something about the person and you lose that knowledge. You lose that deen. Sometime people are at workplace. They saw something they did not like. They both said something that he did not like. He said, I don't want to work with you. And he leaves the work and goes away. And later on now he keeps on suffering because of not having a job. We lose a lot of valuable things in our life just because of not knowing how to control this anger. And believe me, one of the best things in your life is to have this quality of being very kind, very humble. Having that quality that if a person curses at you, you smile back to the person. It will be very nice. It reminds me one of our great teachers, Mufti Mahmoud Saab, rahmatullahi alayhi. Many of you might have heard his name. 
a person came to him and started yelling at him. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala blessed him with the quality that you would never see him angry. That was a person that you, can, you would never see him angry. So, the person is cursing at him and cursing at him and saying everything he can, he can, he, every bad word in his dictionary, and he would just bring it out. And he's sitting and smiling. So that person was so upset that how come you're not getting angry? <laughs> he's upset. Why don't you say something back? So when a person is angry, he wants the other person also to get angry. But of course, the wise thing for the other person is to think right. Not to get angry. Why to get angry for it? Why to react? Just let him say whatever he wants. And therefore Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, إِنَّ الرِّفْقَ لَا يَكُونُ فِي شَيْءٍ إِلَّا زَانَةٍ Whenever there is kindness in anything, that thing becomes very beautiful. So when there is kindness in you and in your behaviors, then your behaviors will become very nice. In other hadith, Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, مَنْ يُحْرَمِ الرِّفْقِ يُحْرَمِ الْخَيْرَ كُلَّهِ A person who is deprived and does not have kindness, that person has no good in him. And sometimes really we see people who get angry very fast. They can never control themselves. A small thing, the slightest things in their life. And if you see the person reacting so bad, and he feels that he doesn't know how to control his anger. He cannot control his anger. He has to do something. But it's only he have never thought of controlling it. He never tried to control his anger. He never went to someone, never went to a physician. And I don't mean the medical doctor, the spiritual doctors, the people who are God-fearing person, the scholars of this deen, to go back to them and ask them how to control it and what's the right way of controlling my anger. Just think about it. If you ask a person if a dog bites you, what would you do back to the dog? Get angry and bite the dog back? You don't bite the dog. But someone else, a person kicks you, you kick him back. A person curses at you, you curse him back. So why didn't you bite the dog back? Because you know, that's not the way. Get off him and run away quick before he bites you again. So at that time, what made you control your anger? How did the person control his anger at that time? If a donkey kicks you, you're going to kick him? So, we know how to control it. And we know the times when we have to control it. But at this situation, normally we don't control it because we think there is nothing going to stop me from doing it. That's the reason. Very quickly, I want to mention some ahadith about how to control the anger. The treatment for our anger. Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said in the hadith, to a sahabi who was very angry, Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, Inni la'alamu kalimatan law qalaha la dhahaba anhu alladhi yajid. I know a word, if he would say that word, the anger will go away. And what was the word? A'udhu billahi min ash-shaytan rajim He said if this person would say A'udhu billahi min ash-shaytan rajim at this time, the anger will go away. That's one treatment. Why? Because anger is from shaitan. Shaitan, you know, shaitan really uses those opportunities. Shaitan likes to use two people very badly. He likes two type of people. And he can really use them just like a toy. These two type of people are just like a toy in shaitan's hand and his control. One is a person who's drunk. Because he's drunk, he doesn't know what he's doing. So shaitan will make him do whatever he wants. The second is the person who's angry. He is also out of his control. Shaitan loves to play with these two people. And alhamdulillah we don't drink. But unfortunately many times we get out of control when we are angry and shaitan loves that situation. He waits for that situation. He'll make you do things that you never think you would ever do them in your life. So, this is, we become just like a toy for a shaitan. And he keeps 
and telling the person, yeah, yeah, you should do it. And say this also, and say this also, and do this also. And he'll just make you do it. So that person becomes just like a toy in the control of shaitan, in the hands of shaitan. That's number one. So first treatment is, أَعُوذُ بِاللَّهِ مِنَ الشَّيْطَانِ الرَّجِيمِ But sometime, our anger goes beyond that. And just, أَعُوذُ بِاللَّهِ مِنَ الشَّيْطَانِ الرَّجِيمِ doesn't do nothing to our anger. And at that time, the person wants to do something. Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, this is second treatment. Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, if the person is standing up, should sit down. If he's sitting down, should lay down. Why? That will prevent him from reacting to his anger. Because anger is from fire. You know when you put the water on the fire, what would happen? The water will be boiling. So when a person is, there is a fire inside him and the blood is boiling, he wants to jump, he wants to do something, he wants to react, he wants to use his hands, his feet. Rasulullah says, sit down. So you want you, a person who's, how many times you might have seen a person who's angry, he's sitting down and he starts cursing, cursing, then he gets up and now he curses even more. Then he walks to the person and he wants to curse even more. And now he starts punching, do whatever. He, so the fire, as the fire is boiling even more and more, he would like to jump more, he would like to react, do something now at that time. Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam told us, to cool it down, you sit down. You are sitting down, lay down. So that you won't react. If you won't react, it will start cooling down. And number three, Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam says that when a person gets angry, فَلْيَتَوَضَّعْ بِالْمَاءِ Should make wudu. Because Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam himself have said it, فَإِنَّمَا الْغَضَبُ مِنَ النَّارِ Anger is because of the fire that's burning inside the person. He's boiling. So he said when you use the water it will cool you down so these are beautiful treatments in addition to this we have to use our mind for two things think two things at that time when you are angry number one think about the virtue of controlling the anger what's the benefit of controlling it what's the importance of controlling it and what can be the results of not controlling the anger and the harms of not controlling it and the second thing you have to think is that Allah has more power over us than we have power over this man on whom we are trying to react and take revenge from. If Allah will do the same thing to us, what would happen to us then? So, if we think about this and then we use the treatments that Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam have taught us in the hadith, saying a'uzu billahi min shaitan rajim making wudu, sitting down, and sitting down simply means you can add to this that leave the scene. Just get up and leave. Don't be over there anymore. You see a place where there is a fire is going on, you are, trying, you are getting angry, just leave. So leaving the scene is also a very good solution of it. So these are the solutions of controlling the anger. So if we control it and we learn how to control it, then we will learn the kindness. Then we will be humble. Then we will learn how to behave with people. And as Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, then there will always be good in every action that we perform and everything that we do in our life. But as long as we don't control it, then we will be just reacting to our emotions and to our angers. And there will be no good in this person's life.